Hello, Mr. Claudie here, and today we are going to do a special section on IB style curve sketching. So here's the thing, curve sketching is a really classic kind of uh, calculus activity that we do, and typically you get a test with like two questions on it. Do this curve sketching question, this curve sketching question, because they each take 30 minutes long. But the thing is on an IB exam, you don't have time to do an entire 30 minute long question on curve sketching. Remember the questions on an IB exam are designed to be pretty quick because the whole exam takes only 90 minutes. So how then will IB assess you on curve sketching concepts? Well, there are two types of questions you might see. So that's what we're gonna go through in today's lesson. The first type of question is sort of, it's like a sketching type question where you're given a function or a derivative function, you have to sketch a corresponding uh, function that goes with it. So let's do three of these and we'll try to go through them and discuss some different strategies you can use. So in question I, the graph of y equals f is given. So there's f at x there, it's some function. And I need to sketch y equals f prime at x and y equals f double prime at x. So I have to sketch the first and second derivative. Okay, so how do I do this? Well, the first derivative uh, corresponds to the uh, function. One thing that is like really quick to help you do this is remember, these points here where the tangent line is zero, this max and min point, this corresponds to m equals zero, tangent line is equal to zero, so therefore the derivative is equal to zero. So one thing that's cool about this is that that should correspond to a derivative of zero. So if I do a dotted line here, you can put an x right here because you know for the derivative graph, it has to cross the axis. Similarly, this minimum point corresponds also to another uh, m equals or derivative equals zero point. Now, the next part, you sort of need to think a little bit about what the derivative is. Remember, the derivative is the instantaneous rate of change. So here, I have a positive derivative. I have an, uh, my derivative should be a number greater than zero. Here, that's a negative slope, so I should have a negative derivative, and then here, positive again. So when I draw, when I connect these points with a curve, well, my graph has to be positive, then negative, then positive. So I can draw this sketch. Now, the sketch doesn't have to be perfect. I don't know any y values, but I know that this is gonna be the first derivative graph. Uh, one thing that really helps uh, when you're doing this is to note that as, and we've talked about this before, as you go uh, take a derivative, you always go tend to go down a de degree. So this would be third degree, meaning it's a cubic function. You can see it's got that characteristic cubic shape. This would be second degree. It goes down one uh, degree, so now it's quadratic. So that's how I knew to draw it as a quadratic. The real question was how do I know it's a quadratic facing up versus a quadratic facing down? Well, that's because, like I said, this is a positive slope, so that means the derivative has to be greater than zero, it has to be positive as well. So you can kind of reason through. Now to do the second derivative, there's a few ways of doing the second derivative. One way is to, uh, well, why don't we try it? We'll, we'll end up talking about them both. One way is to look at the point of inflection. Remember, the second derivative is linked to concavity and the points of inflection. So it looks like right here, there's a change in inflection or a change in concavity. Here I have concave down, here I have concave up, and this is a POI. So this point corresponds to a second derivative of zero. So I'm gonna draw the point right there. And I'm going to just write POI. Now, remember, we go from third degree to second degree to first degree, which is uh, linear. So we know that this is going to be some sort of line. The question then, is it a line that looks like this or a line that looks like this? Well, here I'm concave down, here I'm concave up. So this means that my second derivative has to be negative in this region because I'm concave down, and then positive in this region, I'm concave up. And that is the second derivative. Pretty neat. The other uh, thing you can think about if you want to do this is that technically the POI correspond or the uh, the second de de sorry the second derivative zero is that's the derivative of the derivative. So technically that corresponds to 
um, the place where this curve makes reaches a minimum. So this is where uh, m equals zero. So this is technically where the second derivative is going to equal zero. So it's like the derivative of a derivative. So there's a, that's kind of their quick questions, as you can see, but they really test. Do you understand the idea of the derivative and how it works? So there's a few hints that I'm going to put here off to the side, and we've kind of discussed them. Uh, the first one is that uh, max min points correspond to uh, a derivative equal to zero. POI correspond to a second derivative equal to zero. The second derivative can be thought of as derivative of the derivative and degree decreases with each derivative. So there are some of my hints. Uh, let's try doing another example uh, of this. So we have uh, here the graph of, okay, we have been given the derivative and we want to find the, uh, the original function and the, the second derivative. Let's start with the second derivative. So again, let's look at the derivative of the derivative. These two points correspond to the derivative or second derivative equals zero. So I'm going to translate those down here. Or transpose them down here. Maybe that's the right word. Like that. Now the question is, now I, I can see here that this is a third degree. So I know the second, this one's going to be second degree. So the question is, how do I make it a second degree? Is it a parabola looking up or parabola going down? Well, here I have a, uh, you know, a, a slope that's negative, so I should have a negative derivative. So then I conclude I have some shape like that. And that is the second derivative. Now the problem is, how do I find the original function? Well, this is where we're gonna have to do a little bit of thinking, go backwards. Uh, this point here is some sort of positive or negative. This is positive or negative, and this is a positive or negative, right? Or, or sorry, a max min, max min, or max min. All these points where the derivative of zero correspond to max min. Uh, what I really have here is a, if I look at my, uh, my derivative, my derivative here is positive, and then here my derivative is negative, and then here it's positive again and then here it's negative. So this means if I have a positive derivative, it means essentially that, let's just of course put these points up here. So these zeros correspond to max min points. Again, it can get really confusing if you haven't done enough practice with the derivative. So I know that my function should have an increasing slope and then a decreasing slope so that from plus to minus, that means I'm gonna have some sort of maximum happen here. Then from negative, uh, decreasing slope to positive slope, that should be a positive, or sorry, a minimum, and then another positive. So let's try to graph this. So I have some sort of maximum. Again, I don't know the y values, but I know that I'm going from a positive slope to a negative slope. And then I have some sort of, I don't know, some sort of minimum. I have a decreasing slope it reaches a minimum, uh, that's where the derivative is zero. And then the increasing, uh, I have a positive derivative, so I have an increasing slope. And then I have some sort of, it happens again here, I have another point. 
you can corroborate all that with the uh, points of inflection, right? You have a point of inflection right here and a point of inflection right here. Concave down, concave up, concave down. But the real trick was to use this the, the information about the derivative, um, uh, you know, the increasing and decreasing slopes and then the, the max main points. Uh, okay, should I label that? I guess I'll just label it just so your clues is clear that this is a POI here technically and this would be a POI as well. Should I put one more note here on the side? Just remember. Positive. Derivative. Corresponds. To. Positive. Right, to increase. Increasing slope or increasing function. That is, if you have a derivative that's positive, that means the function's going up. And if you have a derivative that's negative, it means for that whole region, the function is going down. Okay, let's try doing this uh, twice. This is kind of the, the harder version now. I'm giving you the second derivative. Can you work your way back up? So let's look at this. Uh, okay, so these points here, the zeros, correspond to the, this function, one up. They correspond to either a maximum or a minimum. So let me draw those points up here. And I know here that I have a positive, uh, or sorry, oh dear. This is a negative uh, derivative, right? I'm in the negative, then I'm in the positive. Then I go from positive to negative. So from negative to positive, that's a minimum. From positive to negative, that's a maximum. So somewhere here, there's got to be some sort of minimum. And somewhere here, there's got to be some sort of uh, maximum. Don't know what the y values are, but I know the shape. I know this is, oh yeah, this was fourth order. I know this is second order. So I know this is going to become third order. It's going to have that characteristic shape. kind of with the two humps. And that is the first derivative. Now I have to do this again, right? I have to look and see, okay, where are the points where I, uh, I'm i zero? Now, those are sort of reliable. Um, I mean, I sketched it, so I, I, they're as good as I can get. So I'm gonna use those points again. I'm gonna draw this up here. Uh, there's another one there. So where the I have zeros. Remember the zeros correspond to max or min points. This is now fourth order that I'm expecting. So I'm moving up. The other thing that you know is, okay, well, let's look at this actually. So on this one, I have a negative, a positive and a negative on this side. So that's a positive to negative. It's a max. Then I have a negative to a positive. So that's a, that's a minimum. And then I have a positive to a negative. So that's a uh, maximum. So I have a maximum somewhere here. This one is some sort of minimum. And this is some sort of maximum. Again, you don't really know the y values, you're just doing a sketch. And uh, I mean, if we really want to make this accurate, I can look at the points of inflection. They should correspond to these somewhere here. So. I would expect that these zeros from the second derivative to correspond to POIs. So now I'm going to draw this. So I have an increasing function, now it's decreasing, and then the concavity changes at that point. I reach a minimum, and now I'm going to go out like this. I'm still concave up, and then I switch concavity, and then I have that kind of shape like that. Again, it's a sketch, but it, we'd be looking to see that you've kind of corresponded your points to what you drew below. So it's a kind of a weird thing to explain. I find that you might have to watch the video a few times to go through it, and it can get really confusing, but they're quick questions. So it's debatable. Do you prefer this, or do you prefer uh, the you know 30 minute question? Um, this is, you know, you really gotta know your stuff. We can go down to this uh, question at the bottom. This is a quick question. 
uh, that I want you to pause the video and really think about this and try to figure out from this graph which is the, f the first second derivative of the original function. These are not polynomials, so you don't actually get that benefit where the degree changes. You're actually gonna have to use your brain and think. So why don't you uh, pause the video now and, and really think at this and try to get this. What would be a six mark question? Okay, now that you've done those three questions, let's see if we can just go through them and talk about the answers. Uh, again, this question is difficult because it doesn't follow the kind of change in degree that go down one degree each time you take a derivative. These are odd functions that involve exponentials. So let's start with uh, this function here. Let's start, I'll just highlight it so you can kind of understand what I'm talking about. So with this function, let's say this was the original function. Um, what we'd want to know then is do the max min points correspond to a zero with another graph, right? Because if this is the min point, then it should correspond to a zero of the derivative. And look, it does, this one does, and this one corresponds to a zero. They both correspond to zeros of b. Now that would make b the derivative of this, but only if the derivative of b is c. So let's look at the max points and min points of b. So there's the min point that corresponds to a zero for c. And that min point, or max point of b here, corresponds to a min point, or to a zero of c. So that would make, uh, so we'll just label it. So f and x is indeed the, the derivative, or is the original function. And then the uh, first derivative, we'll do its orange, would indeed be b, and then the second derivative would correspond to this blue curve. And you can actually see, once you've made this decision, uh, it makes a lot of sense. If you look at the original graph, look at the points of inflection. This is um, you know concave down to concave up, so there's a point of inflection here, which should correspond to a zero on my second derivative, on my blue graph. Similarly, there is a concave up to concave down. There's a point of concave up to concave down. There's a point of inflection right here that corresponds to uh, the zero on that graph. So that's a kind of useful thing to confirm. Okay, let's do this again. So I have my first derivative, my second derivative, and my original function. Okay, let's start with this big one, uh, reaching a peak. Now, is that does that peak correspond to a, a zero? Oh yeah, it does for this function. The other thing you can look at is, look, this function is increasing and then it's decreasing. So it should have a positive function uh, or positive value, the derivative, the, the second curve, and then it should have a negative value. So it seems like this tall function up here that's actually, uh, looks like it's from the probability distributions chapter. That is my original function. Then orange would be my derivative function, which is right here. And then we should just confirm. This has a max here and a min here. Those correspond to zeros of my second derivative, like that. Once again, the POIs are a good way of verifying there's a concave up to concave down transition that happens right here. That's a POI. And there's a concave down to concave up transition that happens right here. So that's the other POI. So that's also a good confirmation. So fun question, very quick question, but really um, gets to the fact, do you understand derivatives? Okay, let's turn it up and we'll look at the second type of a question. Okay, the second type of question you could get <clears throat> to look at curve sketching would be um, kind of a multi-step problem on an IB exam <clears throat> where they've given you parts of the uh, curve sketching algorithm. They've completed parts of it for you. And so in this sort of question, I would recommend to follow the instructions for each part of the question, but recognize that the big picture, that it's a curve sketching problem. So to really show you this, I'm going to give you an actual problem from a, um, a paper. So this is from May 2013. So we're going to uh, consider a function. Ah, okay. And we are given the second derivative and we are given some more information. 
Now, we're given the function, we're given the second derivative, we're talking about increasing values, derivatives, inflection points, sketching the graph. This has kind of got the rumblings of a, some sort of curve sketching problem. But let's follow the instructions and just see where it gets us. So part A, find the value of f at zero. Remember for uh, IB exam questions, they get they go in order of increasing difficulty. So part A will be the easiest and they'll get harder from there. So the value of f at zero, well, that is pretty straightforward. I just sub zero into my function. So I end up with ln zero to the power four plus one, which gives me ln one, which is, hopefully you remember this, you can type in your calculator if you don't remember. Of course, you probably don't have a calculator with you on this paper one exam, but the answer for ln one is zero. E to the power of what gives you one, zero. So we just did something. Uh, what did we do in the grand scheme of curve sketching? Well, we just found out where x is equal to zero. So we found out the y-intercept. Uh, okay, now we're going to go to part b. Find the set of values of x for which f is increasing. Well, when I read that word increasing, that should tell you first derivative, right? So even though uh, the question hasn't been explicit, it's asking you f is increasing, it should be triggering your spider sense. Oh yes, that's a step in the curve sketching algorithm. That's when I have to find the first derivative. So I'm gonna find the first derivative. So f prime at x is equal to, oh my God, ln. Well, what's the derivative of ln? Remember the derivative of ln mower? No, what was it? Uh, integral of one over mower is ln mower. But the derivative of ln is one over that thing. So I would have one over x to the four plus one times the derivative of the interior function, which is four x cubed. That's a chain rule thing, don't forget that. So I end up with four x cubed over x to the power of four plus one. That is my first derivative. What was the question asking again? Find increasing and decreasing regions. Well, to do that, I need a sine diagram. That's the way I remember it. So to do that, I need to uh, find the critical points. So I'm going to So to do that, I'm going to set the derivative equal to zero. So I end up with zero is equal to four x cubed. Uh oh, I'm not on the page anymore. Sorry. For critical points, I have to set the derivative equal to zero. Um, then I get x is equal to zero. I also need to find where the derivative does not exist. So I have uh, the denominator equal to zero. And that gives me x to the four is equal to negative one. And there's no solution to that. There's no x value that will make that true. So now I can, um, I guess I'll work up here. I'll make a sine diagram. You guys remember how to do this. So I only have one critical point, which is zero. Uh, now, you can do this as quickly as you want. You can make a table with your uh, uh, values, or you could just sub in values. Uh, you could sub in a uh, value like negative one and sub in one. Why don't I just do that real quick just to show you how quick these IB questions can be. So f at negative one is going to be, oh, well, this is the derivative at uh, negative one. That's gonna give you four times negative one over one plus one, that gives you negative four over two. So I don't even need to finish, I know this is negative. And then uh, I know over here, I have f at one, something greater than zero, that gives me four times one over one plus one, that gives me four over two, that means it's positive. I didn't even have to make a table, right? Because I only have two points there. It was really quick. Uh, so now I have a situation where I go from negative to positive. Uh, of course, what did the question ask? Find where f is increasing. So therefore, I figured it out. It's right here. f is increasing if x is greater than 0. OK, part C. Find f double prime at 1. 
Oh, we're talking about the second derivative now. Huh, that would mean we're talking about concavity, right? And points of inflection. But do I have to find the second derivative? Oh, no, no, wait. I was given the second derivative. So remember how when you're finding, when you do curve sketching, it takes forever to do the second derivative. Well, look what they often do in an IB question. They give you the second derivative. So you have to realize, oh, they've already done this step for me. Now I'm going to sub in f double prime at 1. Or I'm going to follow, figure out what they are, want from this. So I'm going to go to my uh, sec second derivative. So I have 4 times, I'm just copying it out here from the top. 3 minus 1 to the power of 4 over 1 to the power of 4 plus 1 all squared. So that gives me 4 times 2 over 2 squared. So that gives me have I done this correctly? 3 minus 1 is 2, 4, two. So I end up with 4 times 2, which is uh, 8 over 4, which is 2. Okay, um, let's go to part 2 of that question now. Uh, the question is saying, hence, remember what hence means? Hence means using your answer above. So using the information you just found, show that there is no point of inflection on the graph of f at x equals 0. Now this is where you really gotta use your brain, right? What is it asking for? Hence, show that there is no point of inflection on the graph at the f at x equals zero. Hmm. Well, the uh, remember what we're talking about. When we're talking about points of inflection. There are two things that can give that are necessary to have a point of inflection. You have to have the uh, second derivative equal to zero, and you have to have a change in concavity. So, why would they ask me? to find the um, second derivative at x equals 1. Let me make just a quick sign diagram here to try to understand what they're asking me. They asked me to find this, hang on, this is the sign diagram. That's how I prove, for me, that's how I prove um, points of inflection. Also look how they spelled inflection, so funny, not British or something. Okay, anyways, the way that I can prove a uh, point of inflection is I usually do a sign diagram. Now they're saying at x equals zero, prove that there's not a point of inflection. Well, one way to point that the, prove there's not a point of inflection would be to show there's no change in concavity. Um, so what I could do is find the, uh, the concavity to the right or the second derivative to the right by subbing in a number greater than zero, by subbing in say x equals one. Oh, that's what they did over here. I subbed in x equals 1 and I got a positive number. So this is positive. So I'll just put a little point here. The second, der oops. The second derivative at 1 oof, is equal to, is positive. I'll just write in brackets c part i. Uh, so then here, really all I have to do here is sub in a number that's smaller than 1 and see what I get. So I'm going to do that over here. Uh, I'm going to use negative 1. So I have 4 times negative 1 squared times 3 minus negative 1 to the power of 4 over negative 1 to the power of 4 plus 1 all squared. So let's see what I get. I get 4 times 1, 3 minus 1, which is 2 over 1 plus 1, which is 2 squared. So I end up with 8 over 4 again, which is positive. Well, there you have it. Since there is no change in concavity at x equals 0, Therefore, there is no POI at x equals zero. So, oh my god, you can't see that. So we've used one of the necessary conditions to prove that there's no points of inflection here. 
Instead of finding the points of inflection, we're kind of doing the opposite. We're proving that there is not one. Now we have question D. There is a point of inflection on the graph and we've been given these points of inflection. Sketch the graph of F for X is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, well, this could be a mistake, but I'm gonna try to cram it into this page. Poor, um, you know, space management on my part. But uh, don't, you know, we wanna keep the feng shui of this lesson. So, uh, okay, let's graph it. So the first thing to note when we graph it uh, right, this is a curve sketching question. We've been given all the information we need. I mean, look, this is only three marks, so the sketching should be a pretty minimal part of the, um, what we're doing. We look at part A. We were told that at zero, there's a point at zero, zero. So I can put that point on my graph. There it is, zero, zero. Okay, what else do I know? That there is a, uh, the graph is decreasing, and then greater than zero, it's increasing. So. The graph is always going up. I don't really know what it looks like, but it's always going to be growing, going up. Remember, I'm not graphing anything in the negative. That's the, the bounds they gave me. Let me just circle that here. Only um, positive x. Okay, uh, so the next thing I know, there's no in point of inflection at x equals 0. But we do know there's a point of inflection at 1.36. So somewhere here, let's just, you know, somewhere here, there's a point of inflection. Okay, so that means that either I'm going concave up to concave, or concave down to concave up, or concave up to concave down. What am I doing? Well, I know that everything greater than zero, or, or sorry, to the, hmm, I know that at x equals one, I have positive second derivative. So I know at x equals one, I have concave up. So that means I'm concave up through this whole section here. And then at uh, x equals, whatever this is, 1.316, I have a change in concavity. So that means I have to change and be now concave down. I'm assuming that it's concave down after 1.36 because I already checked at f, uh, x equals one and I know it's concave up. That was the whole exercise uh, right here. So uh, I think I have some sort of shape like that. Now I should just do a little bit of labeling. Uh, I should label, you know, I know that there's a point one here and I know that this point is 1.316. I don't know the y values. I don't care about the negatives, but that's what I know. And I should put an arrowhead because it's for all x greater than zero, so this curve does go on and on and on. Uh, and that is how you do a curve sketching question. Very quick, 16 minutes, or, or how long should it be? 15 minutes, 15 marks, so it's not short, but you can see it's, it's very different than the things we did in the last section. And uh, good luck with this curve sketching stuff, and we'll see you next time.